Buenas noches, bienvenidos una vez más a Lili Sin Barreras. Andamos tarde, Papá Diosito tenía un plan, hay que resolver lo que Papá Diosito le pone a uno en las manos. Welcome, 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 another Sunday here on Lili Sin Barreras. We have a new guest, someone that I actually have never met, never had coffee with, but our colleague Fernando Zapata said you have to meet this person, please. Uh, let's talk about who she is and what she's doing, so we will soon have that guest. Pero antes de comenzar con nuestra invitada, les invito a todos que le manden muchos, muchos abrazos, muchas atenciones a una mamá que nos acaba de textear, nos acaba de dejar saber que lamentablemente ha perdido su pequeño. So, hi, Eddie, how are you? Share the video, share the video. You're going to meet someone today that is obviously making us proud in the Puerto Rican community and who is going to take a big, big step, but it seems like big steps are not the problem. So please, for those of you who know who I'm talking about, please allow the folks that are there attending to the matter with the family, because we know the family, to breathe um, and to figure out what their feelings are or are not, and it's going to be okay after this phone call or maybe tomorrow, depending on how the family feels, I will get in touch with them and I will keep everybody informed that knows about them. From La Casita de Lili and my tribe, you know, we're with you. Um, her sister is watching the show um, because she feels like she needs this message to get across to her other sister who's out of the country. So welcome and we will leave everybody's name out of that. We want to thank our tribe who is out there. Um, estamos allá en el frío, pero pasándola rico, eh, disfrutando el tiempo con todos nuestros hermanos, sirviendo la comida que hacemos cada tercer domingo del mes. La pasamos muy rico. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Wandita, my partner in crime. And thank all of you who choose to be here with us on Lili Sin Barreras. As always, I want to bring you guests that will inspire you. And Fernando Zapata, el colombiano de nosotros, me dijo y me insistió que yo tenía que conocer a Maritza Bond. He said, you must, you must, you must, you must. Nosotros no somos un programa de política, pero sí nos interesa mucho quién está a nuestro alrededor ¿Quién está haciendo las cosas bien? ¿Cuáles son los nominados? ¿Cómo podemos hablar con ellos? Y son personas al alcance. Son personas que entienden lo que estamos viviendo. Estarán en posiciones que de verdad sepan del pueblo. So it's extremely important for us to recognize the faces, to be able to say, who are they? What do they stand for? Sometimes they live in our own neighborhood and we don't even know. Uh, but we have someone today who I've never met, like I said, so hopefully one day we can have a cup of coffee, tea, or some of that stuff people don't like to talk about. Um, for me, it would be wine. But for those of you who have the fake wine, <laughs> what I call it all the time. Le damos la bienvenida antes que la vean en cámara, que esta lista ha sido muy paciente, sabiendo que pues hay una familia eh, en necesidad. Ella se llama Maritza Bond. Okay, so she's with us, and, and I think this is really interesting because it's a very short bio. I usually don't read people's bios because this is a conversation, and I want it all to flow and to be natural and organic, and people always freak out, and they're like, what are the questions? What does she really want to ask me? And this is really a conversation here on the tribe. Welcome, Puerto Rico. Welcome, Ghana. Welcome, Juliana. Welcome, Mary. Welcome, Mike. Welcome, Ketsi. Sigan compartiendo. Pero con nosotros, if there's someone here that you're going to meet with extensive experience. So, es una experiencia que uno puede cualificar y decir, tiene mucha experiencia, ¿verdad? Extensa, o sea, que tiene mucha experiencia en la administración pública, en public administration. That's not an easy job. Okay, not one that I want either. I'll be very clear. Not one that I want either. Aparte de la contabilidad, es bien importante saber de numeritos. I don't know who you are, but it's very important for you to know how to budget. As much as you may budget your home, your agency, your business, your initiative, 
the city, the state, the federal government, it all comes down to numbers. So we need people who do understand how those numbers work. Also, director of the health, what? Of the city of New Haven. Holla, New Haven. Um, a little bit cold to be in the green, but I'm sure some people are still debating and being in the green. I would if I lived in, in New Haven. And she has extensive experience, but here's here's a little nugget for all of you, dropping some gold for you. So anoten que aquí siempre hay concurso, oreja. Um, New Haven, he dicho, ¿verdad? Ha trabajado también en Bridgeport, pero ¿qué pasa? Que viene de Puerto Rico. She comes from Puerto Rico. And she's a baby at eight years old. A baby. She's not a baby now. <laughs> but she was a baby um, when she came here, if I may. I hope I don't offend. But eight years old, right? Hopefully life is beautiful at eight. Not for every child. And she comes here to the States, right? And she comes to live with an uncle. Check this out. Okay, Marisa was the first, the first in her family to graduate from college. Congratulations, congratulations. So I'm going to leave all of the other goodies and nuggets for you guys to like share y contestar. She's a woman, es puertorriqueña, pero atrevida. Les cuento el chisme. She is no chicken. Guess what she wants to do? Guess what she's running for, all right? Guess, alguien me puede decir, la secretaria del Estado, state secretary. So that's not, you know, like the little chair for anybody. So we're going to bring her on here so I don't torture you anymore. Um, she is smiling over there in the green room, which is always a good thing. And we're going to bring her up and you're going to see her and we will be sharing the screen with her. Very, hello. very soon. There you are, Ms. Bond. How are you? Oh, hello. Buenas noches. ¿Cómo está? Muy bien. Thank you for waiting for us um, as we attend to business, as I'm sure you have seen it before. No, um, we got the opportunity you know, to be here this evening, and I'm so sorry to hear about the news. My condolences to the family. Yeah, unfortunately, um, I'm sure that um, in your work, you see a lot of this, and I'm sure that you're one of the folks who has to have those conversations about um, how many people are dying and um, the opiate disease that we have right now. Men, women, children, families, everybody gets affected. So ladies and gentlemen, here we have the face we've been talking about in that beautiful picture that we have been um, on Facebook. There's Mabel Lasalle también, who we love from Puerto Rico, who soon we will be doing a project with. You and her might be interested in talking. Yeah. Mabel. Aguada, my family is from Aguada, Puerto Rico. <laughs> Mabel, she is incredible. So that said, Madam Bond. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Madam Bond, let's go there. Um, let's bring energy in. What brings you into this field? What inspires you? You know, you're eight years old. You're raised. You come from Puerto Rico. That must have been like, yeah. So, you know, I was born in my family, I was first generation that migrated to Brooklyn, New York. And then from Brooklyn, New York, we moved to New Haven, Connecticut when I was eight years old. And my grandmother and uncle um, helped raise me, um, you know, and I was born in a non-traditional family environment. And, um, you know, for me coming into the city of New Haven, um, I had to lean on a lot of community support. And so when they talk about it takes a village to raise a child, I'm an example of that. I'm so grateful for people that invest into you, including your extended family that wants to make sure that you're successful. You know, it's, it's interesting that you say a non-traditional family because it is very important that we know how much love people can offer. Que mucho amor pueden las personas ofrecer y no limitarse. Estamos hablando, y abuelita, perdón. Donde quiera que estés, abuelita, perdón. My okay. heart, corazón, mi corazón. 
Um, I'm an abuela and I hope I had a great abuela. Uh, mm -hmm. Both of my abuelas were fabulous and powerful women in my life. So I know, but to have an uncle also say, I'm going to raise this baby as well. Um, and eight years old, you know, you're not talking about that little baby, this an eight year old already comes with thoughts and feelings and, you know, desires and dreams and so on and so forth. So you've done a lot. You've done a lot with, with your education, your have experience and health. At what point in time do you, do, who are you having this conversation with? Is it a conversation that you're having with yourself and saying, yeah, I want to run. Is it a conversation that you're having with friends, with loved ones? When does this happen? Because most of us have a conversation with ourselves, right? And something says, oh, I have to do something. When does that happen in, in yeah. the circle? You know, my motivation for everything that I've done in my career, um, in my life actually, has stemmed from just witnessing the different social issues that, are imp that were impacting uh, my community at such a young age and not really um not knowing how to navigate and wanting to solve problems like in that neighborhood in the fairhaven neighborhood at the time we were impacted by drugs violence poor housing conditions lack of access to resources and i uh, and i entered into public service um throughout the last two decades and in the midst of crisis this past two years i witnessed firsthand as the health official for the city of new haven a lot of problems around access to voting um, businesses not really being supported um, in a streamlined fashion from the state to the local level. And when I learned about the function of the Secretary of the State um, by a mutual friend that said, you know, Marisa, you always talk about voter equ you know, equity issues. Have you thought about voter equity and expanding your support um, further than what you license businesses already? And I said, you know, I have not. Um, and when I looked into the office, the mission of the office, it really aligns with a lot of the values that I have as an individual. And I love I love your show because your show is, you know, Lili Sing Barreras. And I want to make sure that we do not have barreras um, when we want to have access to voting. I want to make sure that we don't have barreras for businesses so that they can be able to strive, um, especially minority owned businesses and women owned businesses in our state. And that's why I'm running for secretary of the state and want to be the first Latina Si Dios permite. The first Latina. Let's talk a little bit of what does the Secretary of State do. Para todos ustedes que no saben, hay muchísimas posiciones eh, a nivel este, estatal, civil, federal, nacional, que nosotros a veces no sabemos cuál es el poder uh, de esa persona que se sienta ahí, quién nos representa, porque cuando uno vota por una persona uh, mm -hmm. o no vota, el silencio es un voto. I tell people all the time, silence is also a vote. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, what does the Secretary of State do? So the Secretary of the State's um, mission is, um, is, a, is multifold. The, one of the functions of the office is around access and integrity around voting. Um, at the statewide um, and local level and working with uh, municipal registrars and town clerks. And it's also the first point of entry where people have to register as a business. If you're an entrepreneur, entrepreneur you have to register through the Secretary of the State. And then also there's notary um, notaries that go through the process of applying to the Secretary of the State. But the major functions are really the uh, business aspect where they are registering businesses businesses get to register and my vision is to make sure that we are being more public facing when we are really engaging um, with um, communities like Latino voters, for example, to be part of the local process because I loved your point. Um, we have the power when we vote and we can hold politicians accountable at the local level um, when we are part of the civic engagement process, but it's not equitable across Connecticut as far as how to navigate um, civically, and it's important for us to finally have a voice um, at the state level as a constitutional office because we've never had a Latino or Latina serve in that capacity. And I must highlight because, you know, I'm very transparent, a good Latino or Latina in there. Right. Um, and, and I like the fact that your background, I hope, can carry 
on to whatever work you go on to because I hope the eight year old never leaves you. That's right. You, you know, know what I mean? Exactly. And for me, um, there's a couple of things that, that my, I, I have, I am a government executive official now as an appointed official and not elected and ran a government executive office for the last six years in two major cities. But what's most important is also community engagement. And when you, um, when my upbringing gives me a special lens um, to be able to understand community and looking at literacy and also language proficiency, because we wanna make sure that people are able to understand the information and the language that is understood and also the cultural, because it's not just about language, it's cultural nuances that we have to be thinking about. I love the clarity about that. So one of my biggest pet peeves, and anybody that knows me knows this, they hire people because they speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. I'm like, uh, okay. Maybe yeah. they do because sometimes they don't. Because mm -hmm. when I go talk to them, I go, uh, I don't even know what that is, mm -hmm. right? And um, and then they forget the cultural piece and the generational piece. That's right. That's you right. don't speak to me in my fifties the same way you speak to my daughter who's in her thirties. That's right. Do you know, or my granddaughter, my oldest, who's fifteen. Exactly. The process is very different. We've had different experiences. We understand or not politics mm -hmm. um and why do we want to get in, involved in in politics i always say to people that when it comes down to politics y se lo digo a todo el mundo, um, it is the first line that we have of our voice right it's when the mic opens mm -hmm. so i tell people think about getting to the party you want to grab that mic quickly so you can decide what kind of music the dj is gonna play <laughs> So I compare that to voting, right? It's like, uh-uh, they ain't gonna play no funky music on me. Um, so I'm gonna grab this mic um, and tell them what music I want to hear mm -hmm. play. The problem I find, and help me out with this, is that there is a contradiction between Latino voter voters are coming out, but Latino voters are not. What is your take on that? So, you know, especially when you mentioned it earlier, when we, have different voting cultures outside of the United States, and then we're migrating here in the, in the process of voting. So what we see is that a lot of Latino voters, they definitely are participating at the federal level because that's where they're accustomed to doing. But when we're migrating here from different parts of the country or from Puerto Rico, um, the percentage varies and it's much lower um, when we're here at the uh, voting for the state level and the local level, and believe it or not, that's actually the most important voting time because that is where a lot of resources get allocated. And when we vote, our voices matter. And right now we are the largest segment of the population growing across the United States and in Connecticut. So there's an opportunity for us and it's time for a change. In order for us to be able to engage Latino voters, we need to be able to be relatable to people. And when the constitutional office is not diverse, it is time to make it more diverse, but you need to have the skill set. So when I talk about um, it's important to have diversity, ethnicity should not qualify you. It's an icing on the cake. So we need to look at the both our skill. Oh, wait, wait, my sister. <laughs> May I call you my sister? Yes, you can. That's how we do. Wait, that you dropped a nugget. That's a golden <laughs> nugget. I want to hear that again. When I hear something, tell us that that again. So ethnicity does not make it a qualifier. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I I have been throughout my career. I I love my people. I I know who I represent. I know who I am. Um, but when we're serving an entire state, we need to be able to engage with different communities and be able to ensure that we know who we are, but also um, not box ourselves in. And so for me, um, I have a vision for the state and I hope that um, I can get through this first phase. It's so critical, the first phase, and I'm learning because I'm not a politician either, is that I have to raise a certain amount of money so I can qualify for matching funds. And then I have to go before a democratic party in 19 days and the, which is comprised of, of over 2,000 people across Connecticut and then um, get on the ballot so that I can get to the people. So I have to actually try to get on the ballot on May 7th and, and really convince 2,000 people that are already 
selected um, and hope that um, I can be able to get through them so that the people can then hear the vision and be able to get me to Hartford. Okay, so Ms. Bond is not saying this. I'm fully responsible for everything I say on my show. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna take you out of that. Okay, so I'm fully responsible and that's, and that's why we do it this way. I am so saddened that we keep going for what's easy, for what's already there and has almost become a statue. We have politicians that have become institutions. Mm -hmm. over and over and over again. I think at some point we, as women and men who are our allies, need to understand that change is good, growth is good, advancement only happens when we start moving the train forward. And sometimes we vote for people that we know the name, that's it. Ah, yo la conozco. Eh, debo, eh, 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 ¿Dónde que le pongo esta cosa? Aquí. Eh, sí, yo la he visto tres veces en la televisión. Sí, esa, esa es. Esa misma es. But that person might have been, they have been there for a very long time. Um, and they've almost become an institution. Mm -hmm. And so people are very shy about running um, against this person because they already have the ears, they already have the money. You're not saying this, I'm saying this, I've been mm -hmm. on the floor. Um, so it's not Ms. Bond saying it, it's Lily saying it. They know the people, they know the pockets to check, you know, the checks are coming in with the name, with all of that. You're talking about someone who doesn't have that. Mm -hmm. Unless I'm wrong, Ms. Bond. Yeah, and I certainly um, have never, you know, ran for office. And certainly um, love your take on it. And, and it's very true. And so um, we have to really be able to take the time to learn about the different candidates so we can make the, the choices that are going to best represent the interests of the public um, rather than the popularity. Yeah, no, I'm not into popular. I'll choose who my <laughs> movie stars are. Um, <laughs> those are not my politicians. Um, I do want to highlight the fact that you are a mom. I am. <laughs> I am a mom of two young men, 23 and 19. And I'm telling you, I love them to pieces. They're like all excited about uh, my new journey. They have been my biggest cheerleaders. And everything I do in my life is to be able to leave a legacy for them and be able to ensure that as future generations um, that they are, um, that, that we can leave it a better place, um, you know, because one day I'll be gone. But I can say this, they micromanage me. They literally want to know every move that I'm doing. They FaceTime me all the time. So the older I get or the older they get, um, they, they want to restrict my every move. They're like, so what are you doing, mom? And so it's just so cute that um, they both um, have publicly endorsed me and speak at my at many events. And it's so humbling to know that I have you know, my son's on my side, um, you know, cheering me on and, and started calling me Madam Secretary already and speaking into, into existence is what they call it. <laughs> well, I believe in energy. I, I really believe. I believe que Papito Dios wants you to declare what you want. <laughs> Tell me what you want. You know, don't expect me to try to figure it out. Um, so congratulations to your son, <coughs> because that means that you have raised strong, young, independent thinkers. They are great. <laughs> so congratulations to them. Now, the Secretary of State, how do you find yourself now that we're talking? And see, Lily Sin Barreras is not about politicians, but I am so tired of not seeing the faces. And if you follow my show, one of the faces that I love that I just, she moved on, okay, is Wildalis Bermudez. And she forever will be my negrita. Mm -hmm. in city council she will forever be oh. my negrita because down to earth you know she helped us through and everybody was her constituent you know what i mean yeah. um everybody white black asian right. whoever was that's right. part of her community and then others that's right that just gravitated to her oh, so she that. is a great example you know we have reyes too um geraldo who's you know a good example of you know bringing people together so 
how do you see us changing the way that the Secretary of State's office uh, comes out and speaks to the community? Because you have something that cannot be taught. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You cannot teach someone um, how to be part of the integration of the skin of a community, of the heart of a community. Because mm -hmm. you had to go to college. So you had to go through also some, I'm sure, challenging times mm -hmm. where, you know, the odds were against you. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you see the Secretary of State playing a big difference in how people see the position? Because the majority of the people that I talk to, um, they're like, what's the Secretary of State? First of all, the word secretary, they think it has to be a woman, right? <laughs> And they think this woman is in the office, mm -hmm. right? And uh, then we don't know anything else. Yeah, it's so true. Um, I've been spending a lot of time just even educating the, um, the grassroots, you know, community members, like what is the secretary of the state? Um, and some people that are business owners just know a tidbit of what the office does because they register their business and that's it. But the, the secretary of the state has an opportunity as we move forward, and I just want to commend the work that our current Secretary of State has done as she retires and move on to other endeavors. But we, when we have a core value um, and we're trying to um, uh, um, really have the same issue to address and the same value around protecting our democracy or wanting to support our economy to continue to thrive, that is how you are able to engage so many different communities, whether it's in rural areas, suburban areas, urban cities. And throughout my last two decades of my career, you know, the universe has had me work in different communities across the state. So although I was raised in New Haven, I actually, my first job was in the Naugatuck Valley Health District, which was in Ansonia, Seymour, Shelton, that area. I never heard of that place in my life, right? But when I left New Haven, that was my first um, opportunity to public service and serving constituents having to figure out what were their needs? How do I get the message out to their needs? And when people have knowledge, then they have the autonomy to be able to make a change. And the Secretary of the State's office um, has an opportunity to really utilize, um, this is this model that I love to call social marketing strategies, which you look at trusted messengers in the community, you work with um, traditional media, social media, platforms like yours, to be able to start really educating the community about the different uh, uh, resources that are available to them and even understand the importance about civic engagement so that people can have the autonomy to choose. Listen, in the midst of crisis, I showed that government can work. And it wasn't because I was leading per se, because I was often serving as convener, bringing different stakeholders together that had a vested interest, regardless of race, ethnic background, religious beliefs, but we had a core issue. We wanted to protect the well-being of the public and we were successful in doing that because I convened so many different partners to do that work. And I would do the same thing for the Secretary of State when we're bringing different stakeholders together for the core value of protecting our democracy, make sure that people understand how to navigate the process of voting and also support businesses and provide technical support because honestly, literacy is a major issue. And people don't take that into account when you were talking technical jargon. Our, our community is very diverse and we need to be able to meet that at the Secretary of the State's office. And I hope that I'm, um, at, when elected, I wanna make that happen. So a couple of points, and, and I want you all to be able to follow this because you know this is how we do it here on Lili Sin Barreras. Um, Para mí es súper importante que nosotros tengamos la oportunidad de conocer a todos aquellos que tienen el deseo de trabajar para el pueblo. Todos somos el pueblo. La definición de pueblo no es pobreza. Can we just change that? We have this language of the poor people, the community is equivalent to poverty. No, 
Exactly. We all part of the community. You're my neighbor. I'm your neighbor. Mm -hmm. You know, today is you, tomorrow is me. There is nothing that can happen to one being that cannot happen to another. That's right. Um, and, and so when we start seeing community as a whole, I think that when we lose, cuando nos perdemos, es cuando decimos aquel grupo, aquel grupo, aquel grupo. So mm -hmm. I like the fact that you're willing to bring together many folks who might not see eye to eye all the time, but can engage and collaborate and agree on one issue. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's what we need. And I hope that we learn that through this pandemic that I disagree with many is not gone away. Mm -hmm. And so when I talk about community, I like to know who's in our community. How do you see the activists um, involved in the kind of work that you would be doing because the activists are usually i have the privilege that i'm not i'm not afraid to sit in in all groups i'm i'm mm -hmm. okay with wearing my baseball bat i'm okay for with cleaning the tables i'm okay with sitting at whatever table i have to sit in wear the ugly suit which makes me so uncomfortable i hate them that's one of the things about covid you no longer want to wear a business suit ever um you know uh we we like our jeans now we like our, our sneakers even more um how do you see the activists coming to the table because i think one of the biggest mistakes that people make in the political arena is that they forget about the activists and mm -hmm. nothing happens on the ground that's right and without you know, the activists and that's exactly my point you know we need the grassroots leaders who are on the ground our trusted messengers to help us expand our message but most importantly, when we're developing our messaging, it needs to be consistent across Connecticut. And I pushed for that. You know, as an educator uh, myself, it was important for us to make sure that we brought together all different individuals. And, you know, you use the word activists. I like to use the word grassroots leaders. It's the same exact thing. Um, and, and, and of course, here I go again with jargon because then we start confusing people. But we want to be able to bring together activists that can be able to push the same agenda but when we're pushing the same agenda with the same message we can be more powerful in the change that we need to make um, because we know and we saw firsthand in the midst of covid how there was so much misinformation through social media through all these different platforms and i and we have to do better in making sure that people are not questioning our the way that we are voting and that are um, and, make, and making sure that it's secured and it can be trusted and we also need to make sure that we're supporting businesses. Businesses struggled in the midst of this pandemic. And we need to make sure that, that they are going to be able to thrive in this new era that we're in. How do the small businesses, because this is something people don't talk about much, how do the small businesses receive this information? Because when I speak, I'm a small business myself, and so I'm an activist. Um, on the ground, grassroots. We do this because, you know, this is my background, but I like the, I like the story. I'm mm -hmm. in love with the story. That's what I want to bring to you. That's what I want to bring to anybody is the story. Once you read, you know, once you have the story, the life of the story comes out. Absolutely. You're a mother. You got here when you're eight years old. You were raised in a non-traditional family uh, with an uncle, with a grandmother. First one to graduate from college. You have definitely decided that you want to be in social service uh, to the community. I mean, it's clear from your bio. I mean, you could have gone many other places when I look at your bio. And you were very shy <laughs> in your bio. I'm sure this is not it. Um, so... How do you see small businesses? Because we don't always get the information mm -hmm. about what is the department able to do for us. And this in La Bodega, in the grassroots, those are your communicators. Those are the ones that people go to um, to say, what do we do? Yeah, and, uh, and so our Lieutenant Governor Susan Weiss, when she used to be the Secretary of State, she had a small business unit that um, supported minority-owned businesses as well as women-owned businesses. And mind you, that support is still to some level there, but it, it, there's an opportunity for us to revitalize that unit and to make it more robust where we're streamlining um, and really being a more public-facing office where we're providing technical support, we're providing and sharing resources that are available 
in a more cohesive manner. Because um, what was loud and clear for me as speaking to small business owners, and thank you for being part of the economy and supporting small businesses mm -hmm. yourself because you're in that realm. Um, and, um, and it's really difficult to navigate um, the role of that Secretary of State's um, portal. And Carolyn Simmons, who is now the mayor of Stanford, had a legislative bill um, where she wanted to have a one-stop shop where the Secretary of the State can have all of, it, all of the resources centralized. And that work has begun. So I wanna just take it to the next level, make sure that we bring it into fruition, but most importantly, be able to easily communicate with businesses that um, are very targeted to minority and women-owned businesses so that they can have that information and be able to know what is available to them. And working also with Chamber of Commerce um, more um, in a collaborative and partnership effort um, and also local cities um, that have a small minority um, office or small business um, office and figuring out how do we work together and really not be working in this broken system where there's no infrastructure and the Secretary of State has an opportunity to be more public facing. One of the things that, that I hear a lot, and I'm so glad Mabel is here with us. Mabel has, um, well, Mabel has a lot to offer, but we're trying to get her over here in Connecticut. She has a great program, Connecticut um, Connecting Path in Puerto Rico, and she's housed at the um, Ricky Maltis Foundation. She's also a coach, um, and she is bringing, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this in your ear because I'm going to abuse the privilege that you hear. A good activist always does that. Um, <laughs> Um, we would love to bring Mabel over here because she has a program that I'm going to butcher it, but you'll see the video because we had the pleasure to go see her. Um, Mabel has a program that's bringing the needle back to Puerto Rico sewing. Oh, so it's marvelous what she's doing. So I'm like, you got to come here and do it here because not only does it and it's like with with this amazing designer and you know you have to learn all these wonder but all these women are going to graduate and be business owners That's so amazing. i would love to see that come here to connecticut yeah. um and see women many of us women of color many of us uh, yeah. be able to join in small businesses and then can become God only knows what. Um, yeah. So she is a great example of some that we can grab from Puerto Rico, from, you know, La Islita. And because she knows it all already, just pack it in here. One of my yeah. concerns is that women who can have businesses in digital ways always call me and say, how can I do this? Well, I'm not the expert. <laughs> and so would that be something that if you sat in that seat, you would consider helping men and women who can establish, you know, uh, their digital businesses? Because there's a lot of women with um, and men with super talents that they can make a living. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They have you children know, who are disabled. They have children who I'm sorry to interrupt you. They have children. They can't go out. Um, into the work field, if you will. Um, and they have found a way um, mm -hmm. to make a living. But how do we do it with the resources and following all the guidelines that we have to do? Yeah, no, exactly. And I think I think that's the new era that we're transitioning to and just being able to um, establish businesses in the platform that we, we desire and then determining how do we then funnel those resources. And then I think that's something that I... I, I, I love um, my bill. I look forward to meeting you. We, sh we should definitely connect um, because, of, of course, I think any business entrepreneur that's being innovative um, should be um, should be commended, number one, and um, because we need to be different and we need to bring change. Um, we, we have to continue to evolve and then navigating what's available as resources to allow people to be successful. Now let's go a little bit to the hardy stuff because you know that's what we do here. Um, you're obvious. Do you identify as Puerto Rican? I do. Okay. All right. So I just didn't. I didn't want to speak for you, um, which is okay if you didn't. Right. Um, how do you see this this 
flavor that you come, esto que viene en la sangre de uno, because it comes in your blood, right? There, there are certain things that there that we see, we hear, we are presented in the world um, differently. We have a lot in common with the drums, as I call it, with many communities, you know, that you can't find a community that doesn't love the drum, right? All of our music has drum, is what I tell people all the time. Um, how do you see that playing a role that enhancing your position? You know, I spent um, over a decade advocating for um, language and cultural services in an equitable manner um, across Connecticut. When I was working for a nonprofit organization called Eastern AHEC, um, it was in New London County, Wyndham County, we developed the first medical interpreter training program because we wanted to make sure that when um, individuals were getting services in the healthcare setting in particular, um, that they had the right to have access, access to services that were going to be easily understood in the language and culture that they preferred. And, um, and, I, was a, and I was a strong advocate for that for many decades um, and continue to do that in the work. So I bring, a, I bring a lens of really understanding different cultures. Now, mind you, my curriculum was not just for Latinos. It was for all different um, individuals throughout Connecticut that just had a language um, barrier um, to getting access. And so we worked, you know, depending on where you are in Connecticut, it is very diverse in regards to what is the prominent language. And so um, for me is making sure that we are being inclusive um, as, as everything that gets put out so that it can be um, really from the voter access side, um, being having a robust education campaign where it's preferred for individuals as well as the small business side so that they can have the tools and resources to do that work. And so for me is being able to have a community lens um, that understands the differences among the intricacies of different communities um, from both rural area to suburban areas and also to urban areas. I'm an urban girl at heart, um, but one thing that I have done, done in the last two decades is um, the way the universe worked is allowed me to see the intricacies through different communities so that I can be able to be prepared for the role that I am preparing for for 2022. Um, again, my words, not yours. So I'm making this clear to everybody. Yo lo que estoy diciendo, en mi cajita de acá, donde me ven, es mío. ¿Verdad? Um, hemos pasado varios años um, bajo la presidencia de una persona eh, antes del, del presidente Biden que tuvo poca merced, que se olvidó de, de comunidades necesitadas que nos trató eh, como imbéciles, oh my goodness, yeah. se nos maltrató, se nos maltrató a los niños, um, se maltrató a Puerto Rico de una forma increíble. I don't think there was a community that was not um, touched by bad practices. Um, yeah. I would hate for people to forget that. I know that sounds horrible. But let's not forget that the power of someone holding office can make or break our nation. That's right. Our cities, our towns, our states. Mm -hmm. uh, so as you move forward, you are a mom. You've had the you know public health experience, so you know what cities and towns and states you've been in the college arena. You, I'm sure that with your boys, you've experienced your own experiences as your mother. What, what would you say is the most important thing for, for us right now? What's the first thing in our agenda right now if we're moving forward in our politics? What is the first thing? I like the fact that you are taking clear you used a term that I use all the time, preference, because yo hablo uh -huh. inglés, yo no tengo problema hablando inglés, pero hay cosas uh -huh. que si yo te las quiero decir en español de corazón, de sazón, como me suenan, te las voy a decir en español. You know what no. I mean? I tell people all the time, the colorful words are always better in Spanish. <laughs> Promise you. Yes. <laughs> um, so, you know, there's something that has, you know, that, that kind of stuff. What do you think are, because are, you said, 
preferred. I like that. That's very respectful. Preferred. You know, you know what's so important that you said is that in the in the last three years, we saw how government mistrust um, was exacerbated. We saw clear unethical standards. And as a local health official working in government, I was able to demonstrate that we can still trust government. And if, as you consider who the best candidate needs to be for this election cycle in 2022, for every office, the governor's up for re-election, uh, secretary of the state, so is the comptroller, state treasurer, all of us are up for the same thing. I put myself out there, um, not because um, I am trying to uh, you know, get a salary increase. I have a great career, um, but um, es un propósito. When we do a job um, and we want to do it and we want to make a change, I want to make sure that we are continuing to do the best that we could for the constituents that we serve. Because when you sign up to be a public servant, you are given of yourself completely, 100% take sacrifices from a lot of your social life, especially in the last two years, but because you dev you devote your career to public service, it is important that you are able to do that work and carry out the best interest for the people. And we wanna make sure that we continue to do that and hold myself accountable and others accountable of what we're saying we're gonna be able to do for the people. So here's a, another question that I have for you. Let's let's all be honest. You're gonna if if you're on the seat, you're gonna walk into somebody else's agenda. Things are gonna be already established. This is what I try to tell people all the time. Uno no entra a la casa y la casa está limpia y uno le toca decorarla con todo lo que uno quiera. So there's a lot of stuff that's been Establish, put into place. So I always mm -hmm. ask people have patience with this process because you're not moving into an empty house and going, okay, le cambio las paredes, cambio los muebles, pongo esto aquí y ahora nos vamos. Okay, whatever was done before, lo boto a la calle, lo regalo. Me llamas a mí que love to pick up stuff that, you know, uh, para yo regalarla. Um, but that's not the way it happens. Yeah. There is it's a history that, that walks with you. So can you tell exactly. us a little bit about that so we can... Imaginate, I know all about that life because I was not in New Haven since I was about 22 years old. I was 18 years in my career working all over the state. And then I come back to Connecticut, to New Haven. And on my first day, I had to... Um, I have about 120 employees in three unions, and I had to activate staff that I didn't even know. I didn't even get a chance to take my pocketbook really off my shoulder because I had to deal with a crisis and quarantine 30 teenagers that were visiting from China because we had one presumptive um, person that was ill. So when you talk about, you know, you come in and there's a history and you have to act, you have to know what's your internal workforce like, um, because you are just as strong as, you're only as strong as your team. I am not the expert of everything. So we have to sort of navigate, don't, is the house in order? Because our house has to first be in order to be able to then externally make contributions. And what external individuals play a part with the mission of that office, which is a lot of it, local registrars and town clerks in building relationships. I had to do that expeditedly because I was responding to an emergency. And thankfully, I use the word um, as a leader. Sometimes you have to just serve as a convener. I say that often because sometimes you got to sit back and really gather that information before you start pushing your own agenda. We can't push our own vision. My vision continues to evolve from today to the next day because I meet with individuals like yourself and some people across Connecticut and they have um, they're very vocal about what they want to see differently. Those that know the office, those that do not know the office gives me an opportunity to also say, you know what, we have a lot of work to do about education at the youngest level. It needs to be equitable that people understand how to civically engage so that they know what they have as a power with their vote, with a push of a finger or mark on the paper. Um, you can hold people accountable to what they're saying they want to um, be elected to office. So 
uh, yes, we have to be patient because uh, we want to um, be able to have time to make a change. But what's most important is that we have to be government management is tough. And in the midst of crisis, I had to be transparent. I had to share information that I knew and I had to recognize information that I did not know. And so my hope is that um, I can improve the communications from the secretary of the state's office so that people at the local level can understand clearly what is happening um, at the local levels from their community versus the state and how we can then be able to bring that change. Okay, so I have one question, right? You Like everything else, you can choose to answer it or no. Um, as a woman in my 50s, I've lived a little and um, we still have this attitude that we must be the minority, right? Mm -hmm. We are still fighting this uh why is in their male in xyz position can women be as objective can women make the difficult decisions can women not always be touchy-feely can women can women can women can women um we've had women running the world forever if you look at our history but mm -hmm. now we're talking about politics yeah um, you are surrounded I mean, we are all surrounded by men. We have lots of allies. I must admit, I have lots of allies. But we are surrounded still by men who are not going to be excited of having <laughs> a woman of color, a Latina, wanting to sit in that chair. Yeah, and you know, one of the things that I that I stick to the, my messaging, um, I saw firsthand the challenges of being a woman. I've been a woman boss for a very long time. And so this my, this right here is not a highlight. This is my wisdom patch that I call. It started oh, yeah. out. <laughs> I hide mine, so, CBS. Know, <laughs> so I used to try to hide it. And then within like a couple of days, the darn patch will come back. So I just leave it alone now. So, so I have experienced, um, Certainly, and I have a lot of allies, by the way. So shout out to the right. men I, I, that are Thank supporters you. of women being in leadership roles. I have a lot of men on my campaign team, like yeah. Fernando and many, many others that, you know, they hear my vision and they jump on board and are advocating for me to be the next secretary of the state. Um, but one of the things that um, we have to recognize is that regardless of gender, um, we have to look at people's ability to do the job. And out of every single opponent, men or women, not a single one of them can actually run an executive office from a government angle. And that would be that would take a long learning curve. It's a constitutional office. It's not a legislative office. And I respect the legislators. I work with the legislators. I have advocated for a number of bills in the last two decades. But when we're talking about bringing change to Connecticut and bringing fresh perspective, that's going to be really bold. Um, you know, you're going to have to be able to take a risk. I hope people take a risk with me because I have a track record or of demonstrating that I can get the job done. Like that answer, sister. I like that answer. <laughs> um, I like the answer. Hey, that's how we work here. Um, so I have to ask you a question because I, I would totally be a hypocrite if I didn't. We live in a beautiful, marvelous, multicultural, gay, lesbian, transgender, queer, unidentified, let's love who we want to love. Um, what is your, what is your um, take on that? Uh, because many, many, many have felt, um, and now we're going back to Florida. So let's let, let me not lose my patience and get anxiety. Cause when I hear Florida and what Florida is doing right now is just drive me insane. Um, it's, sad. It, it's very scary. It's very scary. Um, we have a lot of business owners, um, who are gay, lesbian, transgender, queer, um, lots of people. We have the right to love whoever mm -hmm. we're going to love. What are your thoughts? You know, in my role, I have to serve as a bipartisan. Um, I cannot impose my personal values onto others. I have to check that at the door and it's about ethics. And I will follow the same exact thing. Believe it or not, I'm a strong Democrat, but as a secretary of state, 
they have to serve as a bipartisan also because they have to make sure that Republicans have access and resources. They have to make sure that all people um, uh, and inclusivity is, um, is critical. And so um, for me, it's about um, equality and inclusivity. And, um, and I will continue to carry that forward in the role as Secretary of the State because I've been doing that for the last two decades in my career. So don't go away. Do you have a few minutes so you can have some I fun do. with us? Because we like yes. you to have some fun too. So you'll want to come back. back. <laughs> and hopefully we can go and see you at your office and do like the real thing. I will love hang, that. And hang out with you while you probably are running 100 miles an hour. I'll try to keep up with you um, <laughs> and, and do the real, you know, on the ground. So what does it take? I mean, you're talking about around the corner. You are looking at around the corner. So ladies and gentlemen, before we hear Madam Bond, I love that. Um, you can say Marisa. Huh? <laughs> you can say what? Marisa. <laughs> I know. Not yet. Not yet. Como dice mi amiga. Not yet. Okay? Not yet. Uh, vamos a subirte al trono primero, manita. Okay? Oh, All right. I love so. Vamos. Oh, Coach Brenda's with us, too. So you got to meet Coach yeah. Brenda. If you have not met Coach Brenda. Another businesswoman, she is a rock star. So you got some rock stars here with us tonight. Um, vuelvo y les recuerdo a todos ustedes que estamos hablando con Marita Van, que en estos momentos está en camino a querer ser la nueva secretaria del de estado de Connecticut. Sus planes están claros, su agenda está clara, está muy positiva, pero hablemos del dinero en un momentito. Pero antes que eso suceda, we want everybody to start taking note because we have a price every Sunday. ¿Ok? Every Sunday we have a price here. What did Miss Bond, la señora Maritza Bond, Say that you thought, huh, what what age did she get here? Who raised her? Where does she live? Where does she work? Man, I'm making this so easy, making it <laughs> so easy for you guys. And what does she hope for the future? Or what did she say that you go, aha? Uh -huh. I like that. So you have a few minutes while you do that. But let's talk about reality. We need money. I know, right? Right? Oh my goodness. ¿Dónde so, están yeah. los chavos? ¿Dónde está el dinero? ¿Dónde está la plata? ¿Dónde está la mula? You know, ¿dónde están todas esas cosas? Because unfortunately, I haven't found the tree, but if you have, please help me. Um, I know. I haven't found the tree. Um, how do we do this? Um, how do people support you? Um, yeah. How do people reach? It's around the corner. So remind people yeah. how close we are. So I am 19 days from the convention and at the convention, I have had to raise 86,600. So I'm like 75% done with that. And so I need your help to get me there. Um, uh, we can, any donation from $5 to $290. Um, this is a, this is not a trend, this is a movement and any contribution I will be grateful for because that goes to show that I have supporters. And so um, I have a website, marixabond.com, where it talks all about my platform and also the donation link where you can donate before May 6th um, to help me qualify because then I'll qualify and be able to run a full campaign that will allow me to get to the people. And if you serve as a delegate or you know someone that serves as a delegate across Connecticut, tell them to vote for me on May 7th when I am at the Xfinity Center with all of um, the candidates that are running uh, to be able to uh, share my vision and hope that I can be able to get on the ballot because then the primary is August 9th and I want to be able to survive that um, that convention and then be able to get right to the people to, to be able to hear the vision that I have for Connecticut. So we never um, encourage people to vote for one candidate or another. What we really do is give you the opportunity to see the face, to hear the humanity politicians are still human well 90 percent of the ones that i meet some of them i want to figure out where the battery is because they're running like robots but 90 percent of my brothers and sisters who are in the political arena are people who suffer the same thing you do 
you know, you have to take the kids to school. You know, I worried about getting a flat tire. People don't like them on Monday. People love them on Wednesday. The press wants to, you know, chew on them in 30 minutes and then spit them out. And then they love them 10 minutes later. So folks, your politicians are humans. So you are voting for humans. So that's yeah. very important for you to know. You need to start looking at people you vote for who are qualified, who have the heart, who have the heart to do it and, and the skill and can collaborate. Because there is a lot of people who want to, but when you hear them trying to collaborate, most of us on the ground go, I don't have time for this. Mm -hmm. In your first sentence, you just insulted 30 people um, that we represent. Um, I particularly, in, in my field, why, oh, we're starting to get answers already. So you guys can start, you know, your answers so so you can win your $50 here. Um, oh, that's a nice prize. Huh? <laughs> that's a nice prize. Isn't that a nice prize? I know. We do it every Sunday. And sometimes we go up to $100 and $200, depending on who our sponsors are. Um, because the purpose is to give a gift. And with that gift, we also um, make someone's life sometimes a little bit better, right? So that's that's always a good thing. But I want to, I want everybody to think about everybody. You have a doggy at home? Oh, my bell is going to like you already. Mabel, she has a doggy. <laughs> he's a miniature poodle and he's 10 pounds, but he thinks he's my security dog. <laughs> Mabel has one too. I know that for a fact. Um, we need to be aware of, of the time frame that we have, how quickly this is going to happen. Um, and we're talking about Secretary of State. So no importa si estás en Hartford, no importa si estás en Bridgeport, no importa. Lo que sí importa es que entiendas que la secretaria o el secretario del Estado es para el Estado entero de Connecticut. Ok, no importa dónde residan. Ok, si residen, porque tienen que residir, obviamente, en Connecticut, ellos están encargados, esa persona va a estar encargada del Estado entero. So, para que quede claro que no porque vive en Hartford, no porque vive en New Haven, no porque vive en Bridgeport, esa va a ser, eh, ¿verdad? La, las personas que él o ella va a atender. ¿Han escuchado a Marita? Dígame, ¿qué le interesó de lo que Marita dijo? A uh, madre de dos hombres que están detrás de ella vinculándolo todo, making sure that mommy's taken care of and, and that that people understand how great mama is, um, which is great. You have a great track history. Um, I've read about it. I've seen it. Um, I do my research. But one of the things that I find, uh, three things that you said that I, I like a lot of what you had to say, but three things that you said is preference, equality. Okay, I got more than that. Transparency. Okay. And that you have to understand your community. You definitely have to understand who you work for. And one of the, one of the many things I remind people is politicians work for you, my brothers and sisters. But if you don't know what they do, how do you supervise someone that you don't know what they do? Right? Um, how do you go to um, your secretary of state? How do you get in contact with them? Um, what do you need them to do? What questions do you need them to answer? How do you want to communicate with them? So all of those things are important. And it sounds like, uh, Marisa, you already been doing that on the ground already. Um, I know that COVID and people say we're at the end of it. I'm sorry, I disagree um, with lots of that. I, I see some freedom, um, but we have lost people. We've lost lots of people. And um, in this house, we saw it ugly. So I beg everybody to not get so um, comfortable to the point that they put others at risk. Um, so ya nos están diciendo, uh, we will voice uh, the position of the Secretary of State. 
So good evening, Marisa. Congratulations. So I'm going to read you some of the comments before we announce. Okay. Some of the comments you cannot see because people like to keep them private. So that way, you know. Um, so I'll read one in español. Me, aga me agrada mucho esta joven. Parece que entiende en realidad lo que la oficina tiene que estar haciendo para los pequeños negocios. Nunca había yo escuchado que los pequeños negocios estaban incluidos en la agenda de la secretaria del Estado. Okay. Another one says, I always fear when I hear someone who's running to be a politician that once they get in their chair, they'll forget about us. This young woman seems to have clear eyes, less trust. Another woman says, politicians are not my favorite people, but we cannot run their con this country without them. Let's pick those who actually come from a place that understand who we are. Que vio a Puerto Rico. So I think that's a compliment. I think that's a compliment. And here's another one. I don't know you. I never even know you were existed, but I am so proud of you, my dear sister. I too have raised a child of a loved one. I think that if had she turned out the same way you have, I would have been so excited. She is still struggling. What's your stand on the drug addiction that we have in the state? We can't hear you. As you know, it is such an epidemic um, and crisis that we are in, and we have to continue to um, acknowledge that, th that this is something that we need to address and really invest resources to it. We are working in our local city um, because it's, um, we're seeing it at the a younger and younger generations, uh, kids actually um, being impacted, um, and we want to make sure that we continue to advocate. Um, so working um, collaboratively with many agencies um, to spread the message. We are doing education. We are providing Narcan kits in schools. And so I am completely devoted to this cause um, because we know the detrimental effects that this has, you know, in the family and also extended family members. Um, so we got to continue this fight against um, against drugs, but um, most importantly, as most of recently, opioid epidemic that we're in. So it looks like my team is trying to decide who the winner is from the comments. So we'll let them do that. Um, you're around the corner. Um, you do you do math. You do budgeting. But let's let's get real. How much money do you need to get to that to that other side? I, I need about twenty six thousand dollars to get to the other side. Um, mm -hmm. Very grateful for the supporters that um, have donated so far. Um, but definitely um, need donations um, to come in in the next uh, two weeks and a half because I need to be ready to qualify so that I can be able to get the grant and run a full campaign. So, acaban de escuchar a Maritza, si ella es la persona que usted cree que la debe representar como secretaria del Estado, han conocido un poquito de ella, han visto su corazón, se le ve en, en su postura y en, en, en la forma en que se expresa, que está clara, que ha trabajado definitivamente en el área de la salud, que es una muy difícil, que se ha visto en posiciones donde tiene que llegar a lugares o estar en posiciones donde tiene que tomar decisiones inmediatas con un equipo nuevo completamente uh, viene con unas experiencias que, que podemos argumentar que son buenas experiencias que se pueden trasladar, invertir, inyectar en cualquier otra posición en la que ella esté. Es madre um, y sabe lo que es pues sudarse el peso. Uh, no está cambiando de posición porque va a ganar más dinero Uh, yo, ella me, yo ella me quedaría donde estoy. Bueno, yo dije eso. I'm voz alta. Wait, that was my Bart Simpson moment. My grandma would be here. She'd be like, mamá, pero queda porque vas a buscar tanto lío, tanto revolución no. también ahí. You know, that would be my grandma. That quédate ahí, mamita. Estate no. tranquila. But that's not the way we were born. No, my DNA doesn't allow it. DNA doesn't allow it. 
Um, Carmen Otero parece que es, que es la ganadora de nuestro concurso. So, Carmen, you are. Gracias, Carmen. Um, Carmen is the one who um, made the comment that she um, wishes that her loved one who she's raised um, carries so some of you in the future. So, what are your closing words? And, and you know, um, when Fernando called me, I was like, oh, Fernando, you know, I don't do politicians. You know, I feel about politicians. I'm very picky about my politicians, you know, and he knows me. So he had to talk to my team quite a few um, because I was like, I am not having, you know, fluff conversations. That's not what we do here in Lily Sin Barreras. Um, but I have enjoyed this conversation with you and I think the audience has too. Um, feel free to use this on any of your social media if it's helpful. Um, I hope Mabel and you can connect very, very soon. Um, I hope that, I, it sounds like you know Coach Brenda, uh, Marie, um, it sounds. Um, and if you don't, I, I... Yeah, I can't see the pictures. <laughs> right, um, but I encourage you, I'm going to put her up here, that you do the same. And I would also when you have the time, um, I would love to have you meet my boys and my ladies who are homeless um, and unsheltered because I think they have great ideas about opening up businesses and you probably can guide them on how they could do that. And that's the population. Mental health is my number one, my number one uh, issue. That's the reason I'm here. So, words of wisdom, Ms. Bond. How would you like to close this? With well, your May, heart. With well, your May, heart. Well, May is actually uh, Mental Health Awareness Month. And I actually am a child of a mother that suffers with mental health illness and could not raise me. And so it's very personal to me. And so thank you for committing your work um, to people that um, suffer with this illness. Um, it's um, really hard in our culture, especially. Um, for us to even admit uh, mental illness exists. And so we've been battling that for many generations. And so thank you um, for um, the, the work that you do for the community and your advocacy and your activists and your small businesses. I mean, I admire you as well. And you know, for, for the people that are listening, um, you know, thank you for embracing me and, and being attentive to being able to give me an opportunity to share my story. It is hope that I've compelled um, something within you so that you can um, help support. Um, I know I cannot do this alone. And so stay in touch, um, marixabond.com and call me at 860-207-6198 because I like to talk to people personally. Um, I don't have to jump through hurdles to, to get to me um, because I love serving the people. I've, de I've devoted my career to that. And so let's help me get to Hartford, not because I'm Latina, but because I am the best qualified person to get me there. Ladies and gentlemen, acaban de escuchar de Maritza Bon. Me gusta el apellido because it's like Bon. Uh, I, I can make that in so many things. And I must make full disclosure, I'm a, a mental health patient with a brain injury. So that's why for me, it is so important that we no longer hide uh, from mental health. I, um, I respect your mom so much. Thank you. So, so much. Um, it is very, very difficult, and, and this is a great example. It is very difficult to suffer of a disease that is so stigmatized and, and, and that kind of stuff. So um, mommies and daddies that you're out there, sisters like me, um, it's okay to get help. It's okay to fight. It's okay, and this is why we need people in places who are not afraid to say uh, mental health just like your physical health. Mm -hmm. If you Absolutely. don't have your mental health, I'm a survivor of other things. If you don't have your mental health, you don't survive anything. Exactly. So in my belief, my sister, and in this house, uh, you are welcome back. Um, Thank you. Le pusimos la ficha de OK. We have to grab coffee. Uh, Cafe, I hope you 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 can meet our 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 boys, our team, our tribe. Um, I think you you would you would love that. I think they would um, appreciate that too. Fernando always knows where to find me, um, and I hope that others um, and come back. Um, yes, 
come back when when you feel like you want to um, share something with us. Recuerden, la casa de uno tan solo se mantiene con la fundación, ¿verdad? Si tenemos our foundation clear, the rest can move. Paciencia, mi gente, pero no tanta que nos sentamos y no hacemos nada. De mi parte, Dios me los bendiga, Dios me los acompañe, que los ángeles siempre me los cubran. Don't quit and pray for this mother that tonight does not have her child. Buenas noches, Maritza Van. Mucha, mucha, mucha suerte. Que Dios te acompañe y que esos nenes celebren contigo. I'm sure they're like, yes, mom, yes, mom, yes, mom. <laughs> Dios los bendiga a todos. Nos vemos el domingo próximo y en los videos en vivo que tenemos con ustedes. Mucha suerte, mi gente. Buenas noches. <laughs>